High in some of the most remote valleys on earth, a forgotten people cry for freedom. In 33 years of Indonesian rule, up to 100,000 West Papuans have been killed or disappeared. The way they see it, their rich reserves of timber and minerals have been ripped off, their women raped by troops, their lands swamped by Indonesian migrants. Little wonder many seek self-determination. Jakarta has tried to address these demands with a new autonomy package that promises Papuans a greater share and more control. But many Papuans feel this falls short of their demands and have unsuccessfully sought international support. Now the brutal murder of two American school teachers on this road two weeks ago demands the attention of the world's most powerful nation. And America might not like what it finds. Carved from West Papua's soaring southern peaks, Freeport Mine is one of the world's biggest deposits of copper and gold. It's Indonesia's biggest single tax source and a multi-billion dollar profit for its American owners. Senior expatriates are taken care of here, their food flown in, their children taught at a special international school. Last Saturday week, 13 teachers at that school were returning from a barbecue along this, the only road to the mine. At around one o'clock, as mountain mist rolled over the ridges, they came to a grassy rise beside the road. From behind that rise, gunmen suddenly attacked, spraying their two vehicles with automatic gunfire. 93 bullets hit the vehicles, many going straight through. Two Americans and an Indonesian died instantly. The killings drew an immediate response from West Papua's military commander, General Mahadin Simbolon, a man, as we'll see, whose name recurs around pivotal events in the province. He quickly blamed the attack on guerrillas from the Free Papua movement, the OPM. Indonesia's most senior diplomat in Australia agrees. I firmly believe that is the work of the OPM. They are terrorists because what they have so far had is an act of terrorism. The OPM? Yes. Killing people, kidnapping people, these are uh, 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 terrorist acts. You cannot qualify otherwise. In particular, General Simbolon blames the attack on this man, OPM Southern Command leader Kelly Kualik. From thick jungle around the mine, Kualik has for years led a guerrilla resistance to what he sees as Indonesia's repressive rule. Anggap bahwa free for dan peri dengan militernya adalah kriminal, penjahat, pencuri, penindas, pemerkosa, pemusna, segala hidup, pelanggaran segala hukum. Kualik recently agreed to join efforts seeking a peaceful solution to Papua's problems. So elusive is Kualik that these pictures from 1996 are the most recent. But in a signed, stamped statement, Kelly Kualik specifically denies Indonesia's claims that his OPM fighters attacked the American teachers.
Do not accuse the TPN of this. From 1977 until 2002, we have never denied our activities. This oppressive act was undertaken by the TNI, Indonesia's armed forces. Certainly we welcome the statement made by Qualic, but unfortunately, OPM has a lot of splinters group, uh, uh, splinter groups, so he cannot uh, speak on behalf of those uh, groups. Freeport did receive a letter allegedly from the leader of one of those OPM splinter groups, this man, Titus Morib. It claimed the attack on Freeport is the start of a campaign targeting commercial interests in West Papua. It comes amid reports that some hardline OPM fighters are frustrated with the autonomy package and the lack of progress towards a referendum on independence. But Indonesian police now question the army's version of events and have so far said they rule out action by the OPM. Instead, some witnesses say the gunmen wore camouflage uniforms and used military-style weapons, adding weight to the claim that, as in East Timor, Indonesian security forces could have organised and paid for the raid. There are several options. One is that uh, this is indeed the work of the OPM acting independently. Another logical option is, uh, and we've seen cases of this elsewhere in Papua, that it's an OPM unit uh, that's been given the green light to act in this way and often uh, armed and, uh, and supplied by the Indonesian military. The third option, that it's the Indonesian military themselves um, acting uh, with some sort of long-term goal in mind. But why would Indonesian troops kill Americans? Well, this is not the first time people have been attacked along this Razorback Road, despite it being heavily guarded by Indonesian troops. In all of these incidents, the Indonesian military has been very quick to, to blame the OPM. Um, but it does look rather as though it was one of a series of so-called black incidents, uh, in which the goal is quite specifically to argue the case for an increased military, to make the case that you have an active uh, armed opposition and that the only appropriate response is to increase military activity in the area. Even Indonesia's deputy ambassador in Australia can't fully rule out that the army was involved in the killings. Uh, again, I, I am definitely sure that it is an act of terrorism uh, on the part of the OPM. I would simply like to stress here, Evans, that we should not and cannot rule out any possibilities. One reason no one trusts the army is its history. In June 2000, West Papuan independence leader Taze Eloway led a landmark Papuan People's Congress. It ruled the Indonesian annexation of West Papua invalid and promised a referendum. Just a few months later, Taze Eloway was dead. Again, Papua's military commander, General Simbolon, was quick to comment, saying there were no signs of torture and that Taze died of a heart attack during army questioning. But a police investigation found he'd been strangled and nine Kapasa's special forces troops have now been charged with his murder. But they'll only face a military tribunal, not a court. The murder of Dei Selawai was a state crime, not an ordinary crime. There are official policies that outlining the policy of Jakarta to crack down the separatist movement. Uh, human rights organizations. West Papua's leading human rights investigator, John Rumbiak, is calling for an international investigation to find out who ordered Tay's execution. But he warns this is just the start of a new crackdown. I don't believe Speaking at a small Sydney University peace conference just two days after the Freeport killings, John Rumbiak confirmed that most of the Papuan social workers and rights activists in this room are now themselves targets of a new Indonesian police operation. We have the full documents of this operasi Adil Matawa, that's the way the police chief of Papua call it. This operation according to the police chief, is targeting 
the political activists and all other institutions that he claims as hiding behind uh, human rights, social issues, uh, and um, uh, while they mean separatist. These operations, whatever the name is, would take stern actions against those who want to, to secede from Indonesia. So please do not uh, qualify them as social workers. You know, well, I'm uh, using the language of the report itself. Well, uh, we will target those who will commit an act of separatism. That I can assure you. And there are even more worrying signs of Papua's potential descent into violence. Dressed in white for holy war, this is the Laska Jihad, a group of Islamic militants who've caused much of the bloodshed in outlying Christian islands like Ambon. They act with the support of elements of Indonesia's armed forces, and they're now in seven West Papuan towns. We have leaked documents suggesting that there were already 3,000. 3,000? 3,000 are uh, Laska Jihad in Papua. They have got Pakistanis coming in based in their office and training them. Uh, we have this kind of evidence. The big problem is that uh, the police don't do anything to investigate this. In the comments from one of the Laska Jihad leaders, they were engaging uh, with the security forces to combat separatist activists in Papua. With nothing more than sticks, this is a Papuan pro-independence group. But for many Papuans, the raising of militia, both Laska Jihad and some local Papuans, is a chilling reminder of Jakarta's strategy in East Timor. And perhaps it's not surprising. General Simbolon is now Indonesia's military commander in West Papua. But between 1995 and 1997, he was the military commander in East Timor during the height of Indonesia's brutal military occupation. Rights activists say he should be tried for war crimes, but he's never been named. Whether he was making an honest assessment or manipulating events, it was Simbolon who quickly blamed the OPM for the murder of the Americans at Freeport two weeks ago. And there's a lot of mileage for Indonesia's military in blaming the Papuan separatists in the post-September 11 world. Politically speaking now, there is, um, you have to look from, from the global perspective of the war against terrorism around the world now, that uh, this is a clear message to the American citizens and the American government that there are terrorists in Papua. They kill your people. And this is the time to, f to fight against them. The timing is interesting. Washington fears Indonesia could become, if it's not already, a haven for Al-Qaeda operatives. Just a few weeks ago, Secretary of State Colin Powell announced in Jakarta the resumption of 50 million US dollars in anti-terrorism aid. This was given mainly to the police as a congressional mandate bans the resumption of aid directly to the Indonesian military until someone is properly tried for the violence in his Timor. All so far have been acquitted. But Jakarta will use some of this aid to help fight the Papuans. We lack sufficient military equipment to deal with internal dynamics in Indonesia. So certainly we need help from not only from the uh, United States, but uh, from friendly countries. It's too early to tell who murdered the Americans on this road. But as in East Timor and with the murder of Tay Zelloway, if Indonesia's security forces organised it, then the masterminds are unlikely to ever be caught. If it is, in fact, a hardline uprising, then the results could be devastating. All the more reason that this time the world should heed the Papuan plea for a credible international investigation that could help stop the killing.
we are trying to appeal to you that you are dealing with the question of dignity and pride of the Papua ones. We're going to be finished someday, soon. That's what's going on now. Are you going to wait until it's too late?